All right, so now we have our extra overs and unders practice. We have these 40 questions and we'll be breaking it out by 10 questions per video. So this is going to be the first 10. So let's get started. So number one, Alpha purchased equipment for cash but did not record it. Nor an AGE recorded for the depreciation on the equipment. So here, they should have debited equipment and credited cash for when they bought the equipment. They also should have recorded a depreciation expense and recorded accumulated depreciation. But here's the thing, it's smart to use numbers in this case because when you buy equipment, you're not gonna be depreciating, depreciating all of it in the first year that you get it. So it's important to understand how um, these numbers work because they might affect a similar group, just like assets. Um, one might increase it more and one might decrease a little bit less. So we're gonna use a thousand for the equipment for what we bought it for, and we're gonna depreciate it by only 200. As long as it's less than what you bought it for, that's all that matters. Okay, so we have a debit to equipment for $1,000 and a credit to cash for $1,000. A debit to equipment is gonna increase our assets and a credit to cash is going to decrease our assets. And now for depreciation expense, a debit to an expense is gonna lower our net income and a credit to accumulate depreciation is gonna lower our assets. So now let's look at the answer. So we kind of have three different accounts that affect our assets. Equipment should have increased it by a thousand, but cash would have decreased it by a thousand. So right now it's kind of zeroed out, but accumulated depreciation would have also lowered our assets. And so it should have been lowered and it wasn't. So our assets are gonna be overstated. None of these accounts affect our liabilities. So there's gonna be no effect on our liabilities. Now for net income, it was never recorded and our net income should have been decreased. So our net income is going to be overstated. Okay, number two. Alpha received cash in advance from a customer for services to be performed in the future, but failed to record the transaction. Alpha also failed to record an adjusting journal entry. By year end, some of the services had not been performed. So in this case, again, it's smart to use numbers because only some of it has been earned and some of it has not. So for the amount that we got in the beginning, we're gonna use $1,000. And then for some of it being unearned, we're going to do half of it. So when they got the cash in advance from a customer, we're gonna debit cash for 1,000. We're gonna credit unearned revenue for 1,000. Cash would have increased our assets and unearned revenue, since it's a liability, would have increased our liabilities. Now, at the end of the year, only some of this unearned revenue has not been earned, which means some of it has been earned. So we need to take some of it out of unearned revenue and put it into revenue. So we're gonna lower that unearned revenue account by 500, which is gonna lower our liability. And we're going to increase our revenue account by 500, which is gonna increase our net income. So here you can see our T account for unearned revenue. We had $1,000, we credited $1,000 and we debited 500 because we wanted to take that out because it has been earned. And so they say some of it has not been earned. So we're leaving some of it in there, but we're taking some of it out as well. So now for the answer, assets should have been increased but they weren't, so our assets are gonna be understated. Now for liabilities, they should have been increased by 1,000, but decreased by 500. So they still should have been increased a net of 500, which means they're still gonna be understated. Now our net income was never recorded, or the, our revenue was never recorded, which means our net income was never increased. And so our net income is also going to be understated. All right, number three, Alpha failed to record a refund of cash to a customer for the return of merchandise sold during the year using the periodic inventory system. 
So they did not record a return, which means they should have debited sales returns and allowances, and they should have credited cash. They gave them their money back for that return. So sales returns and allowances is a contra sales account. So that's gonna lower our net income. If sales increase our net income and they're a contra sales account, they're gonna lower our net income. And a credit to cash is going to lower our assets. So if our assets should have been lowered and they never were, then our assets are gonna be overstated. Nothing happens to our liabilities in this case. So there's gonna be no effect. And net income should have been decreased and it never was. And so our net income is going to be overstated. All right, number four. Alpha issued common stock to an investor for cash. However, the transaction was recorded as a cash sale. So let's see what they did wrong and then let's see what they should have done. They recorded it as a cash sale. So they debited cash and they did a credit to sales revenue. This debit to cash would have increased our assets and this credit to sales revenue would have increased our net income. What they should have done because they were issuing common stock was a debit to cash, which again would have increased our assets, but they should have done a credit to common stock, which in our case, assets, liabilities, and net income, common stock doesn't affect any of these accounts. So assets were increased in the correct way. So there's gonna be no effect on our assets. None of these accounts affect our liabilities. So there's gonna be no effect on our liabilities, but with net income, it was increased when it should not have been. So our net income is going to be overstated. Number five, Alpha sold merchandise to Beta on credit with the terms FOB destination. As of December 31st, the merchandise had not been received by Beta. Alpha recorded the sale and counted the merchandise and ending inventory using the periodic inventory system. So with FOB destination, if they have not gotten it yet, if it has not reached its destination, no one records anything. Let's see if they did anything. They recorded the sale and they counted it in their inventory. So they should have left it in their inventory because beta hadn't gotten it yet. So that was good, but they shouldn't have recorded the sale. So what they did was they did a debit to AR and a credit to sales, which they shouldn't have. The debit to AR increased our assets and the credit to sales increased net income. So assets were increased when they shouldn't have been. So those are gonna be overstated. Neither of these accounts affect our liabilities, so nothing happens there. No effect on liabilities. And our sales were increased, which means our net income was increased when it shouldn't have been. So our net income is gonna be overstated. All right, number six. Alpha paid a dividend to shareholders to satisfy dividends payable, but recorded it as a cash paid to satisfy an account payable. So what they did was they did a debit to AP and a credit to cash to satisfy that account payable. But what they should have done is because they were paying out their dividends, they should have done a debit to dividends payable and a credit to cash. The debit to accounts payable would have lowered their liabilities. The credit to cash lowered their assets. But here the debit to dividends payable also would have lowered the liabilities and the credit to cash also would have lowered the assets. So here again, liabilities were decreased in the correct way and cash was also decreasing our assets in the correct way. So even though it was put into the wrong account, whether it was accounts payable or dividends payable, the total liabilities overall have no effect. So the answer is NNN because liabilities were decreased in the right way assets were decreased in the right way, and none of these accounts affected our net income. All right, number seven. Alpha recorded an AGE for interest on a note payable instead of the correct AGE for interest on a note receivable. The interest won't be received by Alpha until next year. So here they did incorrectly a debit to interest expense 
which lowered their net income, and a credit to interest payable, which increased their liability, when they should have done a debit to interest receivable, which would have increased their assets, and a credit to interest revenue, which would have increased their net income. So the interest receivable is what's gonna affect our assets. Our assets were never increased when they should have been increased. So our assets are gonna be understated. Now for liabilities, our liabilities were increased when they should not have been. And so our liabilities are gonna be overstated. Now for our net income, our net income was lowered when it should have been higher. So it was lower when we should have been increasing it. So our net income is gonna be understated. All right, number eight. Alpha recorded cash in advance from a customer for services to be performed in the future as a debit to cash and a credit to service revenue. Alpha also failed to record an adjusting journal entry at year end for half of the services performed. So they put it all into service revenue when they first got it. They really shouldn't have, but we're just going to do an unusual adjusting journal entry at the end of the year to make sure the accounts are correct. So here's what they did. And this is just to give you an idea of what happened. They debited cash and they credited service revenue. So at the end of the year, only some of it has been earned, but right now we're saying that all of it's been earned. So we need to take some of that out and put it into unearned service revenue. So we're gonna do a debit to service revenue which is gonna lower our net income. And we're gonna do a credit to unearned revenue, which is gonna increase our liabilities. And here's some T-charts to kind of show you what's going on. They did a debit to cash and a credit to service revenue. We need to lower that account to make sure only 500 is being earned. And then we need to increase this unearned revenue account to show that 500 of it has not been earned. So now looking at just this part, Neither of these accounts affect our assets, so nothing happens to our assets. Our liabilities should have been increased, but they weren't, so our liabilities are going to be understated. And for service revenue, would have lowered our net income, so our net income was higher than it should have been, so our net income is going to be overstated. All right, number nine. Alpha recorded the prepayment of one year rent as a debit to rent expense and a credit to accounts payable. Alpha failed to record an adjusting journal entry at the end of the year when there were still two months of rent remaining in the lease. So if we prepay for rent, you can't really increase your account payable because if you're not actually paying the cash yet, then it's not really prepaid. So that was a mistake that they made. So what they did was they debited rent expense and then credit accounts payable. What they should have done, which is not the normal way of doing this, but we'll go with it, was a debit to rent expense and a credit to cash. You have to pay the cash in order for it to be a prepayment. And so they made that mistake. They should have been doing this, but they also forgot to do a adjusting journal entry for the, the rent that had not been used that we need to unexpense, which would have been a debit to prepaid rent for just less than that for two months of it and a credit to rent expense to unexpense some of those months that we hadn't used yet. So let's see, for assets, we have a credit to cash that was never done and a debit to prepaid rent that was never done. Cash would have decreased our assets by 12,000 and prepaid rent would have increased it by 2,000. So net still should have been decreased by 10,000, which means our assets are gonna be overstated. And for liabilities, our liabilities were increased when they should not have been. So our liabilities are gonna be overstated. Now for net income, here, the rent expense, the decrease to the net income is fine. That is not going to have an effect. But the unexpensing, that increase of $2,000 of the net income was never done. And so our net income is lower than it shouldn't have been, than it should have been. So our, our net income is going to be understated. All right, number 10. 
Alpha failed to record the return of inventory to the manufacturer for a credit using the periodic inventory system. So what they should have done was a debit to accounts payable and a credit to purchase returns and allowances. The debit to accounts payable would have decreased their liabilities and a credit to purchase returns and allowances. So if purchases are an expense that lower our net income and purchase returns and allowances are a contra account of purchases, then they're going to increase our net income. So neither of these accounts affect our assets. So there's gonna be no effect on our assets. Our liabilities should have been decreased, but they never were. And so our liabilities are gonna be overstated and our purchase returns and allowances was never credited, which would have increased our net income. So our net income is gonna be understated. And that is questions one through 10.